Are we ready? Can you guys hear me? Over there? This mic isn't as hot as it usually is. And that makes me a little uncomfortable because I like to hear myself. But we're gonna, I'm gonna adjust, I can do it. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tessa White and this is Pitch of the Week. This is our second week of our second go-round of this event, and um, we're happy to have you here. We're gonna go ahead, I'll explain what we're doing, and then we'll get started. We're on Facebook Live. Say hey, Facebook. Hey, Facebook Live. Oh my God, you guys, this is gonna be archived forever. All right, so this is the UTA Library's Pitch of the Week contest, where we welcome three teams competing for advancement to the final round, which will be held on November 30th. Our teams today are the Bobbing Apples, Scarecrows, and the Headless Horsemen. For those creative names, and we'll up with some trivia in a little bit. Don't worry. Oh, we don't have candy. Do, we, do you have candy? For the trivia? All right. We'll get candy, but we also have popcorn. So our teams will be given a random prompt and 20 minutes to devise a pitch based on the prompt. It can be an idea for an invention, a product or a service, a solution to a pressing problem, or anything else that speaks to the prompt. It doesn't need to be feasible or practical. As long as you stick to the prompt, it doesn't matter how risky, ridiculous, fictional, or imaginary you get. It is okay to get weird. The crazier, the better. The more creative, the better. Think outside the box. Got it? So our teams will be judged by our beautiful judges here, who I will introduce in a little bit, on their teamwork, communication, and creative thinking. Teams can use the internet to help brainstorm. 
and you can you'll be delivering your pitch using either PowerPoint or any other method that you choose you can use Google Slides Prezi or you can just st stand and speak like the old folks back in the day used to do before technology that's my old person voice I'll work on it a little bit. It kind of sounded like I had a medical issue. <laughs> all right, our whiteboard over here has all the information you might need if you're watching at home or on Facebook Live or here and you want to tune in electronically. The URL for the Facebook feed is facebook.com slash UTA libraries and then it'll be archived on YouTube at youtube.com slash user slash UTA library. We're going to have a poll for voting, oh, excuse me, um, after the teams have gone, which you can submit your vote to. It's at libguides.uta.edu slash pow slash poll. If you want to post about us or share our Facebook Live video or do anything on social media that you'd like regarding this event, please make sure to use the hashtag POWUTA. Okay? All right. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to have each team draw a card. On these three decks, we have a discipline, an equipment, or a material. Those are the categories that these decks represent. So there's a bunch of random ones in each pile. So each team will pick one card from the deck, and then that will be the three elements of the prompt that you all go from. Cool? So go ahead and pick one you can pick right off the top, or you can do somewhere in the middle, whatever strikes your fancy. All right, yeah, we're mixing it up, mixing it up. All right, pick a card, any card. Okay, let's see. Let me see, let me see. Oh, nice! The discipline is dance. The dance. Dancing. I'm giving you a stationary lunge at the moment that can be used as a dance move. Whatever you like. Dance, I love it. Dance is our discipline. Our equipment is Arduino. Arduino is the equipment. If you're not familiar with that, Google it. What do we have over here? Our material, oh my god, this is exciting. This is my favorite one we've ever done. The material is glass shards. I know, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so our discipline is dance. Dance. <laughs> Equipment Arduino. Material, glass shards. I mean, I'm already thinking of Annie Lennox walking on broken glass, but you can use that if you want or not, but now it's in your head. Do you guys know who Annie Lennox is? I'm pretty used to my musical references dropping around, yeah, because I'm old. Okay, so we're gonna start the 20 minute timer and you guys have only that amount of time to put together your pitch. And we're off! Get going, guys. Exciting! So while they start, I'm gonna introduce our teams, our team members, and then we're gonna get into a little trivia. Team one here is the Bobbing Apples. Ali Moala back here is a sophomore aerospace and mechanical engineering major. Francis Lewis, is a senior biology major who minors in psychology. And Elena Heidelberg is a sophomore mechanical engineering major. And this is our Bobbing Apples team. Give them a round of applause, yes! <laughs> Clap for the children. <laughs> All right, so I've got some random trivia from the interwebs that is inspired by Bobbing Apples. If you know the answer, please shout it out. We, at this moment, don't have any candy to give you, but you can get an extra bag of popcorn. All right, first trivia question about bobbing apples. Where did the tradition of bobbing for apples originate? 
Does anybody know where the tradition of bobbing for apples originate? Just, you can guess if you've got a tidy guess in your head. Nope, nobody wanna guess? Where did the tradition of bobbing for apples originate? Shout something out. Be brave. I wanna say you be brave. Uh-oh. There we go. Nobody's hurt. Sturdy materials here in the Fab Lab. No one? Did you say England? We have a smart man over here. Yes. The answer is Britain after being conquered by the Roman Empire. Excellent. Do you, we'll get some, well you're a judge and so that's your reward. <laughs> but if you want some candy and we ever get it, if Martin gets it, then we'll give you a little sweet treat. What shape can be seen in the seed pattern when an apple is sliced through its middle? What shape can be Not a heart, although that's sweet. Just as sweet as the apple. Huh? It's not a cylinder either. Well, yes, indeed. Good job. Our judges are so smart. Yes, it is a star. We'll get you some candy, too, <laughs> at some point. Maybe next week. Who knows? I think Martin is on the candy hunt. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, what is the record number of apples bobbed in one minute? That is a good guess, but that's not the right answer. Did you say 60? Not the right answer. But not terribly fall off, far off. What did you say, Asami? 75, also not the answer. You're going cold. You want to go down a little bit. Anyone else want to try to guess? Record number of apples bobbed in one minute. Guinness Book of World Records. That you're as close as anyone has come, but not quite. Nope. It is 37. Random number. But thank you for guessing. Would you like a piece of candy? Um, we got two right answers over here from our judges. I don't know if they have a sweet tooth or not, but. <laughs> All right, last trivia question for the bobbing apples. According to Celtic lore, what is the reward for biting into an apple on the first bob? Ha! <laughs> That's a reward. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to lose a tooth. I've done it before. It's the most expensive thing I own because it's fake. It's true. I'll tell you the story someday. Not right now. According to Celtic lore, what is the reward for biting into an apple on the first bob? Well, the answer is finding true love. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Again, so you were on the right track with the heart shape thing earlier. Finding true love. So if you ever bite into your first bob, that sounded weird, but you know what I mean, then you're going to find true love right away, according to Celtic lore. All right. Team number two is the Fearless Scarecrows. And our team members are Whitney Adindu, who is a sophomore nursing major, Subrat Parajuli, who is a sophomore electrical engineering major who minors in sustainable engineering back here, and Dib Sharma is a computer science major who minors in math. These are our fearless scarecrows. Give them a round of applause. Yes. I absolutely have to say yes like a drag queen. I can't, it, like, it's just like programmed in me. So just, you know, I think everyone should say yes queen because it feels good should try it yes queen yes yes there you go it's back yes there we go all right fearless scarecrows trivia because there is such a thing on the internet
Thank you, Google. Where did scarecrows originate? I definitely did not know the answer to this. Oz, hilarious. Give her all the candy. That's not the right answer, but it is an awesome guess. Where did scarecrows originate? Not Oz, but anyone know? Another correct answer over here. Ancient Egypt, right here. <laughs> Ancient Egypt is where scarecrows originated. Who played the role of Scarecrow in the movie, The Wizard of Oz? Does anybody know who played the role of the Scarecrow in the movie, The Wizard of Oz? I mean, it's a, it's a pretty obscure name. I mean, it's not like it's Judy Garland, God rest her soul. But it is Richard Bulger played the Scarecrow in the original movie, The Wizard of Oz. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. All right. In the DC Comics universe, the secret identity of the supervillain, the Scarecrow, is who? Anybody? Huh? What'd you say? Yes, our video, yes, Justin, our videographer, Justin, got the answer right, yes, queen. It's Dr. Jonathan Crane. Awesome, good job. In the Marvel Comics universe, what is the name of their demonic scarecrow? Anyone know the demonic scarecrow name in the Marvel Comics universe? No? I didn't even know there was such a thing, but his name is Straw Man. Be very afraid. All right, let's introduce team number three, the Headless Horsemen. And we have today Anuj Saxena, who is a sophomore accounting and information systems major, Esha Shah, who is a sophomore computer engineering major, and one of our, we have a couple of volunteers today because we had no shows. If you're watching and you're supposed to be here, you suck. So I'm just kidding. You don't suck. I understand. Student life is stressful. But we have Sakshi Nag, who is a junior computer science major. The Headless Horsemen slash women. Yes. Thank you for the applause. I don't know why my New York accent comes out when I do this. But it does. All right, Headless Horseman trivia. Who authored the classic American short story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow? This is a pretty easy one. Who authored the classic American short story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow? Anyone know the answer? Oh, I, I couldn't tell if someone was yelling it out. It's just a bagel. The answer is Washington Irving. Now you know. According to this legend, how did the horseman lose his head? According to the legend of Sleepy Hollow, how did the horseman lose his head? Does anybody know? From cannonball fire in the Revolutionary War. That's dark. But that's according to legend what had happened. All right. Irving's Headless Horseman was not the first. From what period did this literary motif originate? Anyone? I couldn't tell. The it's not an actual, like, yelling out of an answer. These are tough. You, the Headless Horsemen one are tough. Yeah, I know. So the answer is medieval Europe. And for a fun cartoon reference, in the Scooby-Doo episode, The Headless Horseman of Halloween, what was Shaggy's Halloween costume? Any Scooby-Doo fans out there and know the Headless Horseman? Halloween episode? <laughs> what? 
He was not a ghost, but you definitely get some candy for trying. Thank you. He was a vampire. Oh, Scooby Dooby Doo! I just wanted to do that. <laughs> All right. So we have just time check, you guys. Eight minutes and 30 seconds left. Eight minutes and 30 seconds. Not even anymore. 23 seconds. So I'm going to introduce our lovely judges now. And thank you so much for joining us today. First, we have Kofi. It's Kofi, right? Kofi Egbedo, who is a licensing associate with the Office of Technology Management, a component of the Office of Research Administration here at UTA. He is responsible for the protection, marketing, and licensing of physical sciences, campus-created inventions, and intellectual property and patent. Kofi received his Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering and a Master of Science in Innovation and Techno Technological Entrepreneurship. I had problems with that last time. From the University of Massachusetts, Lowell. Welcome, Kofi Egbedo. Yes, yes, Kofi. Jeff Sievers over here, our trivia master. Chief Operating Officer of Acceleron Software has more than 35 years of experience in the telecom, wireless, and software industries. He has held executive management positions with AT&T, Lucent Technologies, did I say that right? Go, uh, GoCom, Airband, Communications and Acceler Acceleron Software. His areas of expertise include executive positioning and selling, negotiating large contracts and commitments to closure, and developing creative offers. Amazing. Jeff Sievers. Give him a round of applause. And over here we have Hayden Blackburn, who is the assistant director of Tech Fort Worth, where they help entrepreneurs commercial commercialize innovative technologies. The manager of Cowtown Angels, the Fort Worth-based angel investor group. Prior to being at Tech Fort Worth, he was the founding director of IdeaWorks, a mixed industry incubator. He got his start into entrepreneurship when launching a social enterprise back in 2007 and has been working in economic development and community building ever since. Hayden Blackburn, give him a round of applause. <laughs> Judges, thank you so much for being here. Okay, so I'm interested in this last few minutes that we have. Six minutes and counting, guys. Six minutes left. Anyone who's watching in the audience, what do you think you would do with this pitch? Dance, Arduino, and glass shards. What would you come up with? Does anybody have any ideas of what they would do? Hold on. I need some slack. Did you have an idea of what you would do? All right. What would you do for this pitch? Um, like, would I finance it? Well, just whatever you, whatever comes to your head. How would you? What would you come up with it as far as like an invention or an idea? Jewelry, and you can use that with low income, so you can help that to help the community and give back. So what you can do is take to the recycle center and take all the broken bottle shards and use them to make really cool glass um, jewelry, which then the low community the the poor people, they can use that to make funds for schools and stuff. Awesome. And so if you incorporate dance and Arduino into that, maybe like you could make the jewelry for a dance competition. All right, cool. And I forget what Arduino is. Is it software? Microcontroller. It's like a self-contained little computer that you can program it to do all kinds of things. You can put sensors on it. You can put lights on it. You can put speakers on it. You can put anything on it. It's like a little, it's like a little brain for a computer. You can use the glass shards and decorate it with the glass shards. I mean, glass is a good thing to put. Broken shards are sparkly and beautiful. I mean, I, if, if I don't love a bling, I don't know what's true in life. Give me bling or give me death. <laughs> I don't know. Did you have any ideas? Let's hear it. So I would make a Russian ballerina out of glass shards and then control it with uh, 
the Adreno, because of course it's a machine, so you program it to do the black swan. Oh, gorgeous. I want to see that happen. Yes. So you said you want to make a Russian ballerina out of the glass shards and then use the Arduino to program it to perform the black swan. I mean, yes, queen. Yes. I love that idea. Yeah. They're like, ooh, that's really good. Russian ballerina. Awesome. Thank you for your ideas. How cool. All right, teams, we're just above three minutes left. Um, I think we have enough time for Asami Nagakura to come up here. She is our strategic initiatives coordinator for the Startup Lounge, and she helps us every Thursday for our pitches. And um, she's just going to let everybody know if you're not aware of what you guys do. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Asami. I still don't know. <laughs> I like to eat the mic and it's got my lipstick on it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Asami and I'm a grad student and I work at Startup Lounge where um, we help entrepreneurs <laughs> learn a lot of stuff. Um, our seminar series is called Epic Maths. We have it on every Wednesday, 5.30 for about an hour and a half. And we still have two sessions left. Next week, we'll go over crowdfunding and 29th of November, we'll have a networking event. And uh, we'll have a professional photographer to come in to take headshots. So if anybody needs a nicely done headshot, um, please come by. It's 20 bucks, but he usually does it for much more expensive price. So I um, hope to see you guys there. Thank you. Thank you, Asami. Give her a round of applause. Yes, Asami. Um, 20 bucks for a headshot session is nothing. So if you want to be looking cute on the social media profile pics, you need to go ahead and take advantage of that. It's usually hundreds of dollars. That's an awesome deal. All right, one minute and 25 seconds left, teams. If anyone who's watching today is interested in signing up to be a part of next week's pitch of the week next week right and then the 30th is the final um if you're here let martin know and if uh you're watching and you're interested go to liveguides.uta.edu slash pow and you can sign up there to be on one of the teams all of our participants today are getting a ten dollar gift certificate to their choosing they get a list to choose from which includes einstein bros uh amazon starbucks printing services did i cover them all Maker Shed. Um, so lots of really awesome options. And then the winners of the whole thing will get a $50 gift certificate of their choosing. And the other teams get 20, is that right, in the finals? So incentives. Everybody likes incentives. Give me a gift certificate. I wrote that. <laughs> 23 seconds left, you guys. Wrap it up. You guys have 20 seconds left. We cannot wait to see what you have come up with. I'm seeing, I'm seeing some bright colors, some dance images. I'm so excited. Three, two, one. You're finished. Oh, I'm excited to see what you have. Guys, time's up. You got it. You got it. Okay, cool. So this next portion, each team will get five minutes to present your pitch. You can obviously use what you've come up with. Um, you're going to get the microphone. Um, I think it's best unless you do, if you need the whiteboard, make sure you come up as close to out here so our judges and audience and Facebook can see. So you'll get no longer than five minutes and then the judges We'll have a moment to ask clarifying questions if they have, and then we'll get to judging and voting. Team one, are you guys ready to go? Yep. Oh, look, there was a giveaway for the clue. I just saw that. Oh, well, uh, the, for the trivia, you guys were engrossed in creation. No, no. 
Oh, wait, no. One of you did. You answered it correctly? You said a star? You knew it. You knew it. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. Is that right? Did you really just get back from Egypt? Oh. He's a jokester. We got a comedian over here. All right. Team one, are you guys ready? Okay. So I'm going to wipe my lipstick off again. You need to, um, if you're using the mic, you need to speak pretty close into it, okay? All right. Okay. So, hello, guys. So our idea for this project is computerized dance floor lightning. We will use the glass shards as the background to reflect the light, and we will, we will use the Arduino boards to create a program to create lightning effects. We're actually providing a service, uh, just like the services that are out there, but the unique service uh, would be for the entertainment side as well as uh, the need for exercise, as we all think of for ourselves every day. Uh, part of the programming to include will be included will be virtual cal calorie counting, uh, party hosting, such as like the jumper places for kids' birthdays parties. This can be for like um, parties for kids or parties for adults, either way. Uh, also, uh, discos can be provided and d dance instruction. If somebody wants to receive dance instruction, that will be a part of the services as well. And as explained, the um, glass shards will be used as our background for the reflection of the company, of the uh, audio programming itself, and also uh, the instruction within groups at, at the time. Okay, so this is all based on fun. This is a giant venue for different things that she was saying. So things as dance instruction, things like Zumba that we do, um, this helps us, the biometrics that are with the calorie counter, the feet that, you know, every step you take will be counted with the Duino's program and the interactive floor. Everything around you, you're going to be surrounded by screens everywhere. So the floor, the walls, the ceiling, everything will be following you. So there could have party patterns on the floor, so every step you take is a new, uh, new dance pattern. You can follow the dance patterns on the floor, learn how to salsa, learn how to tango. You can also have silent disco. So Silent discos just use different music with your headphones, but this one will uh, include the floor with it. So the majority of the floor will be colored a different color for the different um, music that's been playing. And also for the party hosting, this is for all ages. This is for people who are looking for clean fun or it could be other fun. It's all for um, you know, older people who want to dance solitarily. You can host it. You can have venues for any party, for children and for adults, anyone of all ages. But this is just an interact. Uh, interactive room for just a good party, good dancing. It's like kind of being like in the matrix in a room just filled with like just anything you can imagine. You can program it into Arduinos and have it with you. So instead of just having one instructor, you can have a giant dance party with a bunch of people on the screens behind you. You can make awesome music videos in there, just have a bunch of fun. This will be rented out. This will be a nice location, probably somewhere in downtown Dallas. And it could be used by anyone. And the price wouldn't be very expensive. And it would be uh, priced through the hour. And, and all the interactive things are like with it. Obviously, some of the rules in there are no water, you know, like no type of water is emitted. We're going to make this waterproof. So, <laughs> but, you know, so things like um, there's going to be rules. So, like the shoes and the stuff you're going to be wearing, we're going to have our glass being, even though they're shards, they are compacted and they're still layered out. So, you're not going to get hurt. So, don't worry about glass shards in your feet. Um, but overall, this is just a giant party hall for having fun. And also exercise if you're into like Zumba, which is great, good exercise. So thank you. This is our uh, dance party, having fun with lightning. Lighting. <laughs> great job, guys. Judges, do you have any clarifying questions for the bobbing apples? Am I supposed to switch mics? Is that what that was for? Okay. You get to keep that one, we get to that one. Yeah, all right. We don't want your lips. Yeah, you shouldn't you it's not your shade, sir. Is this on? Okay, good. 
Do you guys have any clarifying questions for the bobbing apples? All right. No clarifying questions. Great job, guys. <laughs> I got two mics. All right. <laughs> okay, team two. You know what? You guys should probably just use this one because it's cordless. I'm smart. Team two, the fearless scarecrows. You guys ready? Martin, we're ready with the, the timer? Yes, come on. Come on down. He's on down the road. See what I did? Scarecrow, he's on down the road, the whiz. Just want to make sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Whitney, and I'm a nursing major. This is Subrit. He's an electrical engineer major, and this is Div, and he is also a computer science major. So what we created, it is called the Automated Dance Academy. Can you hear? Okay, so what we decided to do is, so we're thinking about ballerinas, and right, everything they do is about their limbs reaching high, low, spinning, body movement, right? So what we decided to do is we wanted to create an automated dance academy which analyzes all their angles of dancing using the computer. So he will take it over. All right, so basically we have a lady dancer right there, as you can see in the screen as well. So they'll have different kinds of movements of their hands, of their legs, of their limbs. So we're probably going to try to analyze the data of their movement through the glass shreds that's in the wall on two sides, which have sensors attached to it, and it's connected to the Arduino. And that it helps us to collect all the data all across the body of our movements and different kinds of data. And it also helps us to compare the data with the experts with the, with the professional dancers so we can help the lady or the guy to improve what she or he can do for the better performance of our dance. So let me, let me give to Div. So once you're done gathering all the data using all those sensors and the glass shards, the Arduino, it's a really simple computer. It analyzes all the data and shows you a real-time report. So there's a screen up there so where the dancer is dancing. While they're dancing, they can see a real-time report of what they're doing wrong, how different they are from that of an expert. And also, this comes from the nursing side of, the, of our team. Uh, they also get to see what movement they're doing wrong because a lot of time, dancers end up in injuries because of wrong movements. And basically, their bones die out over time because of wrong movements. Um, so yeah, we generate report about what's different between their angles of movement and that of an expert. And because that's dance. Dance is basically different angles, different body postures, uh, different ways of moving pretty much. Um, so yeah, this is what Dance Academy is all about. We want to let those dance maestros fly. Yes, dance maestros, fly. Great job, guys. Judges, do you have any clarifying questions for the flying scarecrows? Fearless? <laughs> I said flying because of the dance maestros. It's in my head. Yep. So I don't know if you really covered it. Would this be just a physical location that all the dancers go to to get the analysis, or is this some place that, or is this an equipment that a dance studio could purchase and install within their studio environment? It's, it's basically we, do, we will have a central location for this to specifically so that dancers could come in. Initially, we do want the professional dancers so that we could just collect the data. And then once we have collected the data, we could start selling this piece to different dance studios all over the world so that <coughs> once they go in and the, their the dancers dance, then they could analyze their data with the professional dancers. So it will be available all over the world. So you know how you can stick a wallpaper on walls? We can embed small glass shards and sensors into really thin strips, put up, put, stick it up on any room's walls. Arduino is really small. You can even minima minimize it even better. You can make it as small as you want. It's a really small, pretty much useless, but sometimes it's good with sensors. It's a nice processor. You can basically make it mobile, stick it up anywhere, hook it up to any TV with an HDMI. There you go. You have a dance academy right there. Good job, guys. All right, the Headless Horsemen. Are you guys ready? Remember to speak pretty close to the mic, okay? Thank you. 
Hello everyone, my name is Anuj, and I'm going to be talking about more of my company, The Moving Shirts. What we bring to you is the future of dancing tomorrow. We're Moving Shirts, we are basically a club, and we bring you the new genre of dancing which is going to change it forever. Feeling broken inside? Come dance it off with the broken shirts. We give you the new ultimate kaleidoscopic experience. While a kid, how many of you love using a kaleidoscopic, kaleidoscope? looking into it and amazing how many different forms it can have. And we give you, give you the same 3D experience which you can enjoy and take it with yourself forever. We are, we are a club right now, but we plan on expanding it further and make it a dance competition and then even a, a training school. How we do it is going to be talking about more about it further. And uh, using this kaleidoscopic and the Arduino software, we create an environment where the people feel a complete 3D experience in which they can enjoy the kaleidoscopic experiences. They can have all different kind of, uh, it's more of a dark room and we use amazing lights. So that way they can create different, uh, different virtues and uh, uh, different themes. Just like how many of you, you must have seen the Mario game which uh, an amazing lights team created using the dark theme. So we're giving people more of that kind of experience. Now we're going to be talking more about how we do it and using the technology. Sakshi will be taking over that. Okay, so let's talk about how we're managing all of this. So we work on three principles. We have physics, technology, and arts, and we combined all of those. So it's a very simple principle of reflection of light through a glass shard. And the way it reflects from, let's say, a plain glass shard versus a colored glass shard. Now let's combine them to make like a 3D figure and how light is going to reflect off that. Now, we really love how light reflects off diamonds, don't we? So we use all of that and com com combine all of those aesthetics, use the Ar Arduino to simulate that, and that is basically the aesthetics part of it. Now, that is going to be all of the interior of our club, all of the dance floor. We can even have costumes of that, obviously with padding inside because you don't want to hurt yourself. Um, we can have the discotheque balls and everything, everything with glass shards inside. And the Arduino takes care of that. Um, yeah. So why do we do it? Um, we'll talk more about that. So you may, hello. So you may wonder why are we doing this? There are already dance companies around. If you want to express yourself, you just go to a dance club. But for us, our motto is to help people who feel broken inside, and that is what moving shards expresses: moving along with the shards of yourself. Now, in this world, usually people think about the pursuit of happiness, but in this like stress-driven world, stress-driven world, we're always moving so fast and it's too much for us. So people want to express themselves and we believe that we're a perfect place to come and express yourself with the shards. Um, why would people come to us? We think we provide a lot. We provide the aesthetics and a new way of expressing yourself to an eclectic manner. Um, so what, um, so dance, why did we choose dance? Because one of the biggest things people relieve stress is through dance, say ballet or jazz or hip hop. We, uh, with Arduino, we support all types of dances. We combine our um, new software and glass shards together to provide this new aesthetic of expressing yourselves. Yeah, that we know. Great job, guys. Great job. Judges, do you have any clarifying questions for the Headless Horseman? No? No clarifying questions? All right. Great job, guys. How about we give everybody a round of applause for some incredible work today? All right. Uh, so now, judges, begin your judging. And if you're watching here or at home, we want you to vote too. And you can vote at libguides.uta.edu slash pow slash poll. And we will check the voting at the same time that they conclude their voting. And if there is a tie amongst the judges, your vote will declare the winner. That's only if there's a tie. There has indeed been a tie before libguides.uta.edu slash pow 
slash poll. That's a lot easier than the last one. This is a tough one. You guys did amazing work. This is where I sing the Jeopardy theme song usually. But I feel, I feel like I need a new tune. Like, what's another waiting tune? Keep on waiting, waiting for the world to change. Waiting. That's okay. You have to be your own champion in life. Okay, get your votes in. Libguides.uta.edu slash pow slash poll. P-O-L-L, not P-O-L-E. That would be a different type of show. All right. If you need more time... You shall have it. We still have some online voting happening. This is not a live poll like it has been in the past, but we will still tally live with Facebook Live. <laughs> How many times can I say Facebook Live in one of our pitches? Let's count. Although we are almost done, so we can count afterwards. But then we'll count next week, and I'll try to say it more times. That's not true, because then it'll be obnoxious. But hi, Facebook. You got team two? I had team two. You had team two? Keep on waiting. The dance maestros. Let them fly. called jazz what I just did jazz improv just kidding <laughs> the judges are in deep discussion about who the winner might be All right, we've got a t we've got a somewhat live tally. Yeah, maestro is not spelled wrong. Right. Judges, do we have a clear winner? Are we tied, or, or where are we? We got a winner. All right, so Martin's going to tally up the poll voting. And if one of you would like to take this mic and let us know who you've declared the winner to be. Hey, guys. So our judges are ready to let us know who our winner is. And then um, we'll also give you a chance to give the winning team and all of our participants some feedback, OK? <laughs> All right, so we've got a little technical glitch happening with the poll. But, I mean, that could be home viewers. I'm popular on Facebook. <laughs> so, don't get it twisted. <laughs> or maybe it's a glitch. Maybe it's a glitch. But we don't have a tie amongst the judges, it turns out. So, it's moot. So, after a lengthy deliberation and a lot of... Uh Communication about the pros of each of these teams. Our winner is Team 2, the Fearless Scarecrows. Yes, Team 2. Great job, guys. This was very close. Um, but I'll give it to our other judges. And I'll, Got any feedback? Anything we want to pass on to them? Uh, it was uh, very close. Um, team 2, I think you did an excellent job. Team one, very strong. Again, very close. I actually selected team three. 
And the reason I did was I, I really liked how you pushed a brand, uh, your brand, uh, the moving shards. You, you really were very strong around promoting a brand. I liked how you showed the intersection of uh, physics, technology, and art. And uh, also, also kind of an overall theme for your business, the genre of expressing yourself. I thought it was very, very strong, okay? So uh, again, all three teams did great. Uh, team two wound up being the winner, but um, uh, I felt very strongly about uh, your, your presentation and your efforts, so great job. Well, I don't have much to say, but uh, that all three teams did great. And uh, you know, I selected team two uh, for because I think I believe that the way you all three all three of you put the uh, you know the prompt together and you know and kind of use your background starting with the technology uh, with uh, the whole idea you know play well together and I like the the, the real time data collection to improve the dancers uh, you know movement and so on so that's my view of it. Do you have any more feedback? Judges, thank you so much for your feedback and your selection. Team number two, congratulations on being the winner. We'll see you back here on November 30th for the final at 12 o'clock for your chance to win a $50 gift certificate of your choosing and to compete one more time. Awesome job, everybody. Thank you so much for participating today. Thanks, guys, for coming. Please come back next week and for our final on November 30th. Have a lovely day.